So I've been going to the festival up in Canada since 2007, which was the second year of the festival. And I've been there every year since. I've watched it grow from this very small festival into this amazing event that it is now. It's gotten quite elaborate. But every year along the way was special and um, different and precious in its own way. They were like little chapters of a book, you know. A typical festival would be somewhere in the vicinity of 15 to maybe 19 concerts over a 10-day period, which is uh, quite an undertaking. We are reaching about a 2,500 mile square uh, mile radius there in Canada, and audience participation has grown. We know that people are coming from further and further distances, so the festival's reputation has really gotten out there, and uh, we hope that will continue to grow into well into the future. Not only do I get to perform you know, collaboratively with some of my greatest friends and it's just such amazing people that I know, but to get to perform for such wonderful people and be welcomed with open arms year after year, it's just, it's a truly special thing and it's something that I cherish and I am I consider it a, a huge blessing to be a part of this festival. I think back to this festival and I'm just so very grateful um, to think of all of the things I've gotten to do to reflect on such amazing growth that I've had and such amazing memories with such incredible people. It's also great to see the community actually get involved in the music making. We have a lot of community members get involved in the choir as singers, in some of the instrumental music making as well. We've done workshops for singers, we've done workshops for guitarists. I've had the pleasure of working with some local aspiring guitarists and it's very rewarding every year to come back, see their development and to really appreciate their musical journey and their individual story. With the inception of the opera program in 2011, this brought uh, another aspect to the festival, which then brought in more audience members and a wider range of music and a lot more diversity. Since we started the music festival, more than 100 of our students have come to Quebec to sing for you and sing in the festival. Many of those students are singing in Carnegie Hall and throughout the country uh, and got their start really singing at Quebec and they're so thankful for that. I'm also very thankful that our family uh, has gone there every year uh, together. We've sung together, we've uh, met so many wonderful people together, both our colleagues in the festival and of course the wonderful, uh, all the wonderful people from Quebec that we've met. Yeah, it's been such a great, great times that we've had in Quebec, and it really is such a tradi tradition for our family to go there and meet everyone that we've spent so much great time with and all the other musicians that I've learned from since I was 10 years old, and, and now I'm starting my own career as an opera singer, my own education and path, and I have so much to thank from the Songe d'Ete for all the foundation that they've given me and all of the um, all the different concerts I've been able to sing in and Yeah, so 
we always look forward to it as a family, being able to make music together and to uh, bring the students to the beautiful region. So uh, one of my fondest memories uh, always is joining with the community chorus for the concerts through the years. Uh, Matt was a boy soprano when he first started. I remember a specific concert of the Foray Requiem when a bat decided to join us. That was quite entertaining. Very scary. Um, so. Uh, many, many, too, too many beautiful musical memories to, to recall all of them. Also in 2011, Christina Montalto came to Canada for the first time and she graciously, after that festival, offered to help me uh, with the organizational part of the festival here in New York. So I started helping alongside Harris back in 2011 when I was finishing up my bachelor's degree in music. Uh, I didn't realize at the time what I was really getting into. Uh, it was mostly just a few emails get in touch with so-and-so, do a little bit of organizing, but I slowly and quickly realized that uh, I was really in for something great. Uh, I didn't realize at the time like how many wonderful experiences that I was going to have in the many years to follow. My first summer at Songe d'été en Musique was 2011. I was so happy that my longtime friend and colleague, Harris Becker, had invited me to join other cherished colleagues and friends to make music together. As I drove into Courcelles that first year, I was struck by the beauty of the land, the rolling hills, and the majestic skies. The other highlight for me has always been the people, their warmth and friendliness and their appreciation of and reactions to my performances. I have many wonderful memories of concerts. The intimacy of the first Bach concert I played at Moulin Bernier, chamber music performances with my dear colleagues, Dale Stuckenbrook, Veronica Salas, and Haywon Kim. Since the inception of the festival, uh, the idea of guest artist and composers coming to the festival is an important part. And in the first year, Guitar Trilogy came as a guest and they came uh, many seasons after that. at that time the wonderful Canadian guitarist Jerome Duchamp uh, came for many seasons and Lu Fang the uh, renowned people player uh, was at the festival for many years and is a real strong part of our festival uh, the soprano Tommy Hensard came a couple of years the harp guitarist Claude Laflamme we've had composers there like Michael Frasetti uh, Howard Rovix Joseph Russo Frank Wallace Haley, Haley Savage and Michael Roberts some of these composers had their music played there. Some of them wrote special pieces for the festival that were premiered at the festival. I have many wonderful memories of concerts. Collaborations with percussionist Frank Cassara, 
and meeting and playing the extraordinary pipa player Lu Fang for the first time. So this festival has a long history of premiering new musical works. With the Artesian Guitar Quartet, I've had the privilege of premiering works by Alan Hirsch, Michael Roberts, who's also a member of our quartet. And um, recently in 2019, I premiered a work by Larry Lockwood for electric guitar and vibraphone. And again, just showing the diversity, musical diversity of this festival. And it's been a pleasure to be a part of these really, really exciting uh, premieres. One of the exciting things that was going to happen for the 15th anniversary this summer in 2020 was we had commissioned two world premiere pieces written for uh, two different villages. One was written for Lambton and the other was written for San Romain. The Lambton piece was written by the English composer guitarist Laura Snowden and the one for San Romain was written by Michael Spiroff, a Canadian composer. It would have been pretty difficult to try to do that uh, virtually and edit everything and splice together, and it would not have had the same effect. So we are waiting to do that to, to premiere them next summer uh, in the 2021 Live Festival. And it really will be just as exciting to have these world premiere pieces written by these wonderful uh, composers. An important aspect to the festival is all these pianists who are uh, accompanying us for all these wonderful singers. And uh, we've had some, so many great pianists and uh, vocal coaches. Leanne Overton was an incredible vocal coach and pianist, was there many years. Uh, John Eisenberg, uh, pianist, uh, who's come every year since I believe 2012 or so. Uh, Haywon Kim and Jeffrey Marcus. These people's dedication and devotion to the festival and to music has been so important. and. Uh, important, such an important aspect to the vocal program of the festival uh, that has grown so much over, over all these years. In the fall of 2014, I was asked by the Youth Orchestra of the Americas if I might be interested in having a concert of their orchestra the following summer. We had established a relationship with them a few years earlier. This was a request that I just felt like I could not say no to. Uh, and it would take some doing, and uh, we had to just raise some funds to pay a few minor expenses. And Christina put together a Kickstarter campaign, and that was how we raised those little bit of funds that could make that happen. The YOA contacted us and said, hey, we're going to be passing through during your festival. Can we do a concert with you, for you? And it was like, oh, wow. I think that was definitely 
one of the biggest highlights that I'll remember. I mean, watching them perform in the Lambton Church. Everyone was there. That place was packed full. So in the summer of 2015, the Youth Orchestra of the Americas played in the Lambton Church. The church was filled with, to capacity with people uh, upstairs and downstairs. There were 80 members of the orchestra uh, playing Mozart and Dvorak. There, uh, the members were from 25 different countries. At the encore, they all took out flags from their countries and were waving them. One of the musical highlights for me has to be when we had the Youth Orchestra of the Americas playing one of my all-time favorite pieces. They played the Dvorak New World Symphony. And just to hear that orchestra in that space that we've been coming to so many years, uh, it was really, really, really such a beautiful experience. Uh, and I think we were all, everyone involved with the festival, we've all been pretty proud of that moment. Just the joy that I think the people felt in the community was overwhelming and, and breathtaking. These people never had uh, an orchestra like that come to uh, Lambton or any other little village there. This was really a, a major event. Could be one of my most um, uh, memorable events of all these years. There are so many, but that was certainly spectacular to see that orchestra in that church. So amazing to see something like that happening at our, like, you know, little festival. It really, it really felt like it was putting us on the map and really opening us up to some other possibilities. And and uh, and they were such a pleasure to work with. They were so professional and so down to earth. The audiences struck me right from the beginning. I I was so um, moved by the warmth we felt from the people we played for. They would come up after the concerts and talk to us, and they were so genuine and um, grateful for the music we had brought. It was just so touching, especially, you know, coming from a very urban area where there's just such a glut of music that often it's ignored. You play and it's ignored, but we go up there and we feel so appreciated. It's, it's really lovely. In 2016, we uh, got not-for-profit status uh, and charitable status from the Canadian government. This added a different organizational aspect to the festival, which showed to be very helpful in the years that follow. And uh, again, I cannot um, express my enough gratitude to Denny Bilanger for helping making that happen, and everyone who was involved in the f first board of directors and who really worked tirelessly to make this happen, and Thomas Quigley for all his wonderful uh, organizational skills and ideas and love of music. After the concerts, the performers usually gather at Casa Deli to enjoy a meal and a drink. This chance to be together, for all the performers to be together, has also become a tradition that we all look forward to. Also, I have to mention the food, <laughs> if no one's mentioned it yet. The Casa Deli that is there is legendary. Um, it's also where I discovered poutine, and uh, that's become a yearly tradition. Of course, the ice cream, um, the pesto pasta, it's thinking about it now. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's incredible and the people there are just amazing. So sad that we can't be there this year in person making music, but to come together virtually is definitely better than nothing. I think the fact that the festival is virtual this year 
really makes all of us aware of how special and unique an opportunity it is to go play music uh, for these communities in these beautiful performance spaces, these beautiful churches. I think it's going to make it even more special next year when we do get to go back. Um, so on a personal note, it's it's been really wonderful to make a connection and to play music up there every summer. The camaraderie between old and new colleagues, the inspiration of the surroundings, and the chance to communicate with music has always made my time in Canada at the festival one of the highlights of my year. The festival is made up of the community in the Eastern Townships. All our festival partners, meaning the venues that we play in, and the different towns and so forth, are so essential to the, to the makeup and the spirit of the festival. It's amazing to think that one concert started this whole thing back in 2003, but here we are, 15th anniversary, and uh, it's amazing what Harris and everybody has done uh, to really make this possible year after year. I mean, there are no words to express how grateful I am for all that Harris Becker has done to create such a phenomenal experience for everyone involved. I thank this festival so much. I can't wait for years to come and, you know, we're going to make a lot of fun music as time goes on. The most important part of this festival is definitely the friendships that I've made, that we've all made, in Quebec. All the musicians, my colleagues and guests who've come there uh, recognize that and people's willingness to give music and play music in the beautiful uh, setting of the Eastern Township is due to the people up there and the warmth uh, of the community and that collaboration between all of us.